there's no idea that you have that's not God sent, that's for the good of humanity. If it's for the good of humanity, the Holy Spirit wants to invest in it. But you have to be fit, focused, organized, disciplined, and armed with a plan of action. Well, that's what I'm asking you to do. What's the plan? What's the plan for your life? The first thing to do is to really look at where you're hurting. Tears rolling down your cheeks. I'm telling you about Ron Evans, a brother who I was crazy about, and I don't want to know all the time. Brother who was crazy, and I was crazy about him. I loved him because he was smart. I liked him. I didn't even know him until long. I liked him because he was smart, you know? And um, he was the first person I ever knew who had an um, answering machine. So you know how long ago that was. <laughs> so my daughter, you can't be bringing folk up in your house when you have kids, right? So I, uh, my daughter was at my mother's, and I called him up. We can get together. I left a little message on his entry machine. I wrote about this in my first book, In the Spirit. And I didn't tell the truth. I lied. I think I said I called him eight times. It was probably about 15. <laughs> I can imagine. Ron, we get together tonight. Sean's away. Ron, call me back. Ron, kick it. Ron, never call me back. <laughs> the next day, he called me up. He said, I want to see you. Can I see you? Come on. He came. And he said, you know, Susan, you're really a nice person. You're a good boy. And you're a good man. I know that you're really looking for a man to marry you, and somebody who can raise your daughter with. I'm not the one. I'm really not the one. And I don't want to hurt you. And I'm like, wow. I've loved him, really loved him, since that moment. From that moment till this, nobody has ever had to tell me what love looks like. And what it feels like. I'm begging anybody to be loving me. There's no fragrance you can wear or a pocketbook you can buy or some little outfit or hairstyle that's going to make somebody fall in love with you. I know not in love with you. You don't know somebody to love somebody. So I'm like, I'm not chasing anything. I'm chasing you, though, to get involved in the National Cares Mentoring Movement. Windy City Cares has led. Anybody in here know Lakeisha, Sewell Gray, and Toussaint? Werner, they are our leaders here. And I'm going to come to that in a moment. But first, see, we're not going to take care of our community until we take care of who? That's it. That's what I'm talking about. You first. That's it. You first. Like she said, me first. Now, to us, especially women, that sounds sacrilegious. Oh, no, because we can't come before the children. Yes, you do. We can't come before our parents. Oh, yes, you do. We can't come before the church. Oh, yes, you do. And before your man and your job, it's you first. When I don't take care of me, I, you know, I love the way um, that, um, that uh, my beloved, I can see this face right here, Mahatma Gandhi put, Mahatma Gandhi, when he went home to India from South Africa to lead the, the movement to liberate India from the British Empire, they said, Baba, we need you here every day. He said, no, I have to have a day off for me where I don't see you and I have no work to do. They said, but you can't do that. We're fighting for the liberation of our people. You know what he said? If I don't take care of me, I won't love you well. I won't love you well. When I don't take care of me, oh man, if Kefra's driving to the little house in the country, and he's a fast driver, I hate the way my husband drives, but again, if he was here, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I want peace in my house. So you have to mind your mouth and what? Watch your mind. You can't say everything you feel, you cannot. I don't care what the psychologists say, we're always arguing with them about that in essence. You have to be totally honest. Oh no. No, you have to tell somebody they're not a good lover. You know, I don't want to hear that. Just move on if that's your thing and you have to have it. I know I'm sure you don't You don't want to say anything. You want to say, you want to speak to people the way you want them to speak to you. Let that be the rule. Even if they lost it, my angel told me. She said, your relationship is not with them, it's with yourself. And if you, I can, we can cuss anybody out. Black woman, come on. Our mouths are our weapons. And you know what it is? It's a residual, and I want the brothers to understand this, is a residual of slavery. Because we were in the big house. We knew everything that was going on. They were not letting the brothers in there next to the women. We were there, and because we were not considered human, yet, we suckled. Those babies suckled at us. I, I, I'll never understand that. Because we were not considered human or bright, they didn't think we were present. That's so what we heard everything. Everything. We could run right back to the field, right back to the camp. Hi, tomorrow was 
they're selling meat. They're selling black people. They're selling enslaved people. We were giving orders all the time. You ever know a black woman who couldn't give an order? <laughs> and it's a residual of slavery. But we don't need to bring that energy into our households. What we need to bring is gentleness. No matter who you're like. No matter who you're like. Our mates, our children, our parents. As parents age, it's a challenge dealing with aging parents, especially as they slip into Alzheimer's and other illnesses. Mm -hmm. Patience, they will just be patient, loving them. The challenge is with you to always bring a soft, loving voice. You should be safe harbor. Safe harbor. So the children will tell you the truth. Mommy, you know what I did? Don't be mad at yourselves. Well, Daddy, you know, and some of my children are not doing well. Make a child excel in school. I wish somebody had told me that. You know what makes a child excel? Or somebody get off of drugs? Or some of our children are incarcerated or they come home and they have a hard time? You lost your dad, but that's not the truth of who you are. Your daddy's baby. Your mommy's angel. I held you in my arms. You're a good person. Don't worry. If you speak to anybody in crisis like that, they're already healed. Your words are healed. Because everything that mommy says, everything mother says matters. Everything. Can't you remember every harsh thing that your mother ever said to you? Or the person who raised you? And every kind of thing as well. Okay, so let me, let me just come to the point here. I forgot what I was, oh. You have to take care of you first. The pillars, what are the pillars? What do you need to stay strong? Here's a little ritual I want to give you. Make up your own, take a piece of this that work but it will create a miracle in your life. Get up every morning and put a smile on your face. Gratitude. Gratitude makes everything that you have more than enough. That's what I didn't have. Oh, Billy left me. He has a girlfriend. My cosmetics company's gone. Essence has only made me five of them. Of course. Anxiety, pain, pressure, heart attack, 23. You crazy? How about you have a healthy child? Woo! And a roof over your head. And you're young and fluffy? Come on, man. You have a cosmetology You got the job in essence with all those women who had major degrees, didn't want to be the beauty editor. I didn't go back to college until I was already the editor in chief of essence. So, you know, wherever you are is where you're supposed to be. It's the only place you can be. It's the only place you can move forward from. So, only can be proud of it. What's the step forward that I need to take? in order to be of service to God and live this exquisite life, all the rooms in the mansion. You weren't created to struggle. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have like down times and times when things seem like they're falling apart. But the joy has to be underneath all of that, losing my mother. Many of us have lost our parents. Mommy taught me that Essence doesn't have to come first. Because when she got sick, it was like, oh, Essence? Oh, I'll be there. But it'll be on the phone. My mom, you know. So everything that comes your way, even when it's painful or shameful, is a lesson in living. It's a lesson in living. Please remember that. It's a lesson in living. Every time you do this, you try to move forward and you're mad at this one. Because they hurt me in third grade and that teacher, that person sexually abused me, emotionally abused me. That, you know, that uncle, that neighbor, that we can, ah! We all have a story we can tell. Everybody can come up here and tell a story. Everybody in the video can tell a story. Part of that is life. Her people hurt. Nobody who is in his or her right mind hurts a child or anybody else. We do what we feel we must do to take care of ourselves. That's, that's so complex. Just be with that. Take it home. Somebody who's drinking, why can't that person get themselves together? It's no, don't cry. Get yourself together. That's how they think they have to take care of themselves. I'm addicted to coconut cake. I mean, crack cocaine? Lord. I'm trying to get from the airport to my house without buying a slice. But I'm going to have over three nights. So let's, you can, now you may be addicted to some drugs. You can't come up in my house and get high. And I love you, baby. And I know I'm praying for you. And I know you're going to do better. But to be mad at somebody because they, oh, addiction has got to be, I just smoke cigarettes. It's all right. It's all right. You know, so the pillars. You wake up and put a smile on your face and you say, Thank you. Thank you for my life. Oh, thank you for my life. I'm here. 
have more than enough. And when you approach life like that, God gives you more and more. Because you are grateful for what you have. And when you focus on what you have and you're grateful for it, gratitude grows what you have. So gratitude is what you want to live in every single moment. Go home and tell your beloved, I am so glad that you're in my life. Some of us have partners, we haven't said a kind word to in 20 years. <laughs> Mad because of something that that person did 20 years ago. Oh, baby, come on. I'm loving you. I don't even want to be mad at you anymore. I want, I want us to be joyful. Let's find a way to joy. Or you know what I say to y'all? Love them or leave them. Mm -hmm. Love them or leave them. Because there's somebody else out there who's going to love them up. Just the way he is. I say this to myself, you know. The three things. You've heard this before. You ask before you speak to somebody. Is what I have to say, do I think it's true? The answer is yes. Okay. Does it need to be said by me? Okay, if the answer is yes, okay, then what's the last question? Does it need to be said now? If the answers are no, you shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. If the answers to those three things are yes, then you say, how do I say it? So I don't do damage. Without a lot of emotion and passion, it's going to hurt somebody. You know? And so you get up and put a smile on your face and you think about what you're going to eat today and what you're going to do today to advance your life. Amen. Why am I here? Why am I living here? What is it not? What do I want to get? What do I want to give? What do I want to give? What has God created me to give? And whatever that idea is, whether it's starting a mentoring movement or a magazine or somebody there, you're working with young people as educators, you know, somebody else is going to start a little restaurant somewhere. What, what, what am I here to give? What am I here to give? You put that in your mind, and you say, today I'm going to take one step toward that. Make a phone call. Give a credit clean up. You know, do the things, do some studying. Learn how to edit if I'm going to be an editor. Learn how to create a magazine if I'm going to be a magazine. Mm -hmm. Learn how to start a restaurant. Go work in a restaurant. That's how I became um, a cosmetologist. I went and got a license. Not because I wanted to do anybody's face. I wanted to start a line of cosmetics. It got me an essence. One of the cosmetology lessons. Up in the Bronx. Those women who had journalism degrees weren't interested in writing about anything as mundane as beauty at the height of the Black Power movement. So the Holy Spirit has a plan for your life. And if you're put, so your life is, say, the aisle right here. And you want, this, this, that's a nice wide berth. You can do this, or you can do that. But the moment you start stepping over here, and not working out, not eating right, life's going to slap you upside the head with diabetes, obesity. But not for your punishment, for your awakening. That's what it is. So, come on now. Come on now, wake up. Because if I could feel good and look halfway decent without exercise, I'm going to move the muscle. <laughs> muscle like you fuck with a cake every day. <laughs> and so I'm saying, you want to understand, okay, this is where I'm supposed to live. Now you step over to that side a little bit. So, human and divine, right? Human and divine. Human and divine. Which means you'll always be vulnerable. Everything that we can see is dust, including us. It's the unseen one that I want us to have. Faith. I want to share something with you before I go on and give you the rest of these pillows and get out the door. This is what I, I learned. It really has helped me to understand the power that is in us, the power of the entity that created us. My husband loves science. On the science channel one night, I learned that there are more stars in the universe. We call out the star we can see, the sun, right? The sun is a star. There are more, and stay with me now. Just, just imagine this. There are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches in the world combined. I was like, what? There are more suns, stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches in the world combined? And in the summer, when we're out in the sand harbor, I go to the ocean. And I do my meditation there. And I'm standing there, and I'm looking at the flow of God, the eternal flow, unceasing flow of the Holy Spirit. And I'm trying to imagine this little piece of earth that I'm standing on, if I dug deeply, just the part of the beach I could see, there probably were a trillion, trillion grains of sand. A trillion, trillion grains of sand. 
on this one little stretch of beach. So we're saying that the Holy Spirit that created us, the entity, the love that created us and the divine order, because we can predict when the sun is going to rise, set, do whatever, a thousand years from now. Right? That's predictable. And it's always what? On time. Clouds may cover it, but you can, you can bank on those seasons and everything changing. That same love that created this magnificent dance created you. There is nothing broken about you. There is really a peace that is deeper than any wound you may be carrying. And what I'm saying today is that's what you want to be in touch with. The other piece is you can be vulnerable, you can hurt, you can feel depressed, and you can, you can separate. So spirit, spirit, we're looking at, oh, Susan's depression today. And Susan's just going to be depressed today. I'm going to lay in my bed, and I'm just going to weep, and that's what I want to do today. But that's not the essence of who I am. There's something greater than that that I go, this is going to pass. Now, if I'm in my right mind, I know I've been there before, and it passed, and this is going to pass too. So rather than, maybe I just feel like being depressed today, but I can ask myself a question. What have you come to teach me? What have you come to teach me so that I can utilize it and move myself forward and be of greater service to God? That's the whole thing. So now you get up, or you're laying there, you go, what am I going to do today to advance my cause, my life, my career, what I'm giving to life? You make a little note, you take up a little piece, and you do that that day. Make that phone call, make that move. And then you um, have to know what you're going to eat. And it's not a bagel and green juice. <laughs> it's hemp seed or protein mix. And you're reading labels. So anything that has like all the sugars, you know what that? Sugar is a cancer binder. Yes. If you have a big old belly, it's sugar. It's sugar. And everything that's a carb, what? Processes as sugar. So you don't have to be, I mean, a monk, but it's really understanding what your body needs. Sugar? There's a whole other conversation about how Europeans were addicted to sugar and we were enslaved to support their addiction. The, the triangle, bring Africans from the motherland to Brazil, all of the coast of South America, Central America, the Caribbean and the colonies, and primarily what we were planting was sugar cane, and then tobacco, addicting the Europeans Emptying the goods over there, getting the money, going back to the motherland, and there we go. So if you go on, go online and look at the poison of sugar, just go and read about it, and it'll change your mind a little bit, so that you'll have like a little piece of coconut cake and not the whole thing. That's, that's what I'm saying. And you'll, you'll, you'll create your recipe so that you're not adding lots of sugar and, and lots of other things that are not good for us. What we want to do is eat to live. I'm a foodie. Love good food. Want it to taste good, but I want what's good for me and taste good. That's the column you. Mm. There's a lot in that arena that tastes good mm, and is good for you, right? Vegetables, lots of vegetables. So what are we gonna have for breakfast? Hemp seed, pure protein, or another kind of protein mix that you get in the health food store. Make sure it doesn't have a lot of additives that you don't even understand. Can't read it. Don't know what it is. Forget it. You add some kind of wheat germ or some, you know, some of us are sensitive to wheat. So some other kind of fibrous entity, a tablespoon of each of those things, and then a handful, you're not supposed to have seven servings of fruit a day. Who's having seven servings of fruit? You are? Seven servings. All right, she has a look right there, two people. Wow, give her a look, yeah. That's 
that's what Gandhi was talking about. Nobody can exercise your body. Nobody can make you eat what you should be eating. This is what you have to do because you love you. Yes. Right? Now you get up and you go into, you come back from your workout in your bedroom, your living room, wherever. You get in the bathtub, you lay there for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, quiet time, listening in, no music, no books, no television, no radio, just you with you. Yes. With a pen and a pad next to you, the wisdom will flow. Just watch the wisdom flow. Everything you need is going to come your way. The 10 minutes are the most important minutes of your life. And then you get up and you look in that mirror and stop cursing yourself. No more, ugh, you let yourself go. Look at your fat self. Look at your skin. Look at your hair. Oh, what a mess. Fire the judge. Can we say that together? Himself. That's what you brothers need to say. You are so fine, and I love you. Big old Valerie, but you're not going to be here come summer. Right. You're not going to be here come summer. And the Holy Spirit asks God to be strong for you when you feel weak. That's all. That, that's what God's doing all day long, standing for you. Okay, so you come out of there for your children to wake up. It's like, good morning, sweetie pie, my darling, a lover who's there. Hi, baby, I'm loving you. Mm, you gotta go now. <laughs> your keys and having to have four cups of coffee and losing your mind and you get to on the highway and somebody cuts you off and you curse them out and you get to work and all the crazy people are there. <laughs> but you put on your spiritual armor and that craziness just rolls right off your back. You know? So that's the ritual. You decide on the pillars that you must build underneath you. And everything that comes along, every challenge is what? An opportunity to practice love. Okay, here's a hard one. Let me see, how am I going to practice love? So that you're not just responding, you're not just react reactionary. Every time somebody does something, they cut you off, you curse. Somebody curses at you, you curse back at them. Somebody does, you go, no, I'm not living my life. That's just stressful. I don't respond, or oh, I don't. Or maybe I can't with love. But what is the most loving way to respond? To what I'm really doing according to my own values. As for my sisters and brothers, I want to leave you with an opportunity to work with us at Chicago, uh, Chicago's um, Harlem High, where the children are struggling, and I'll tell you who we need primarily. We need men and women who are in the healing arts. Yes. We need men and women who are psychologists, who are therapists, who are social workers, who are in the spiritual world, who are maybe associate ministers, those who are retired teachers, we need all hands on deck. Because we're going in there to create a protocol that's called the Rise of Man, elevating education, expectations, and self-esteem. We are going to get our babies, 1,000 of them. And the reason that we're building it at that scale, because nothing like this exists in the country, and this is what we're doing. Not the little 2% of the kids who are lucky enough in the school to get the program. Not the school on the right side of town that has everything. But we're going to a place where our children have been all but thrown away. And we're saying we are coming in here, able, stable, black people, we're going to love you homeless. And we're going to work with your parents. All led by Principal Reggie Evans, who's a phenomenal principal in that school. And we need you. We have little stipends for those who we bring into the program who are professionally trained healers. We will train you in our protocol. And then we need volunteers who are mentors. Those of you who the high and the humble, to just be with the facilitators and help us to get this plan up and running and so that it's evidence-based and we can show what will happen in a year and a half or two. It's funded by the Open Societies Foundation, George Soros, the billionaire. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to demonstrate is that when, parent, when adults, who are not even children's parents, enter their lives consistently and give them love and instill hope in their hearts and speak life into them and encourage them, the transformation takes place. That's what we're demonstrating. We need the best speakers in the auditorium. We need open hearts and caring people. And I'm going to give you my phone number. So if you all want to help, you saw you know, what we're doing. That's the overarching thing. We need mentors. But for this particular thing, we need able, stable people who can commit at least an hour a week during school time to help save a life. This is what we must have. And it's right here in Chicago. 
and what we're going to do then is replicated throughout the city, and the National Kids Mentoring Movement is now in 60 cities around the country. So look out. Our children who are struggling, you're not going to die on our watch. We're coming to get you. We're coming to get you. 445. You know what? Better to um, better to call me then or I have to call you back. Better to email me so I can focus, so I can forward it on, okay? It's uh, uh, Taylor at caresmentoring.org. Taylor at caresmentoring. T A Y L O R at cares. C A R E S mentoring.org. In the subject, just put Harlan, H A R L A N. Those of you who are not on email, I am 917-445-0240. This is my personal cell number, the only one I have. And I'm giving it to you because what we're doing is the most important work of our lives, ensuring that next generation, and we're not doing a good job. So I'm going to leave you with the last stanza of the Black National Anthem. How's that? Repeat after me right here now. Shadow beneath thy hand. Shadow beneath thy hand. More energy. Shadow beneath thy hand. Shadow beneath thy hand.